Hello, everybody, and welcome to TNM Unplugged Podcast, the space when we are elevating your hearts, your minds, and your soul to a completely different level. Today, we're going to talk about how do we live our values. Values is such a dear and near topic to my heart. And I've decided to bring very interesting guests with me. I have the powerhouse of this beautiful, gorgeous collaborator, wonderful women with me joining today, Nancy Hughes. Sabrina, Andres, uh, and I'll introduce them a little bit. What can I tell you about two of them? They're really special. So Nancy, see, she is certified executive coach. She has over 25 years of experience in leadership development, including coaching senior leaders, creating executive education, and project management. She looks really, really young. Don't trick her. She started coaching when she was really, really, really junior. <laughs> That's why she looks how she looks, even though it's 25 years of experience behind her. Nancy is known for her open heart, for, for, for her honest and flexible approaches. And also she enjoys challenging the clients to the maximum. You know, I've experienced this with Nancy. You know, she's really challenging in a very gentle and lovely and loving way. Nowadays, Nancy also specializes in leadership coaching, team coaching, interpersonal relationships. And she works across the globe with the small organizations, individual clients, and also with the huge multinational organizations. So welcome, Nancy. And then we have Sabrina. What can I tell you about Sabrina? She has all these titles and education, so always feel intimidated. Oh, my God. So she is PhD in organizational development and change. She has double master degrees in social science counseling, human development. And also on top of all of this, she's certified master coach through the International Coach Federation. She focuses on leadership in the Western multinational corporations and also local subsidiaries of those corporations in Asia and globally. She is also a system thinker. She has a deep experience with the senior executives and organizational development. She is really skilled in organizational leadership development, executive development. She's a great facilitator. I know that because her facilitation skills are outstanding. She's also specializing in C-suite coaching, mentor coaching, coaching supervision, and action learning. And together with these two wonderful co-creators and collaborators, we're going to talk about how do we live our values in this important time. So welcome you both. Wow. Thank you, Zoran. So wonderful to be here today. Yes. So let's start a little bit for the audience who are not really in connection to their values, you know, in relationship to their values, how do we define values? What are the values and why is it important to, to connect to them and live them and express them? So let's start with you, Nancy, maybe, and we move to Sabrina. Well, first of all, I mean, I, I was telling you, I, I love values. I've, you know, I probably did my first values exercise, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, where we spread out a list of word values on the ground and I went and looked at them and I had never really, to be honest, thought about it. You know, what truly are my values, you know, and because these are linked to our behaviors and what shows up. So, um, and it's really, it's a wonderful process. I've done it many times, you know, since then, and I, I still enjoy doing it. It's, you know, an exercise of looking, is this still what's most important to me? Is this, is this something that I want to stand by? Is this something that I want my behaviors to, to really exemplify? And is it, is it what my behaviors exemplify? You know, and that's the next uh, level of that as well. So I think it's so important to be self-aware of what they are because they will show up for yourself and for others. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Sabrina? Yeah, you know, Nancy, as you're speaking, I'm just really orienting to that exercise that you're doing and that you say, you know, that are you're fundamental to you. And I was just thinking that I didn't know what my values were explicitly for a very, very long time. And I believe that that's like a lot of people, like who goes around with a sandwich board in front of them going, hey, I'm an integrous person. Look at me. It's not written on my chest here, right? So, you know, I, I feel that I did not know what values were for a long time. I didn't even know what that word was for a very, very long time 
I believe I only got to know what that word was when I became a coach. But I must have had values throughout my life. Yeah. So, so these, this I feel is very important right now in the world that we live in because values for me is really those core beliefs that I have, which are fundamental to me um, and exist in every single person, uh, even though I'm unaware of it. Yeah. Even though I'm unaware of it, I will strive as much as I can to fulfill them. But it makes it very powerful when I began to uh, be aware of them. When I knew what my core values were, that then made it very powerful so that I could align to them. Mm. I'm with you, Sabrina, and also with you, Nancy. I, for a long time, I didn't know my values. And I remember when I began soul searching and, and looking inside of myself and getting to know me, uh, that whole journey was so special because part of that journey was understanding what makes me me, right? What makes me who I am right now? How do I express in the world? And actually what drives my behavior? And at that time, the values popped in. I was like, oh my God, I value freedom. That's the reason why, you know, I behave in that way. You know, this is one of the core beliefs, as you said, Sabrina, that really drives the expression of me. I didn't even know about it. <laughs> I remember talking to a girlfriend at that time and she was like, you need to be tied down. I said, no, I value freedom. <laughs> I need to be free, actually, <laughs> because that's my, that's my core value. So I think it's super special when we begin discovering what drives us, what makes us who we are, and what are, what are those internal buttons that we press and express in the forms of values, yeah? Hmm. For sure. I was just amused right now, Zoran, when you said that, uh, yeah, when you referred to an ex-girlfriend, because I recall going out on a date uh, and this person that I was out with over dinner, over hmm. dessert actually, told me that I fulfilled his top three values. I'm wow. telling you, I ran away. I ran as fast as I could. You know, it was the first time that I met this person. And I was like, really? <laughs> we went down the rabbit hole all the way down to the very deepest part <laughs> where we haven't even gotten to know each other yet. And you're telling me that I fulfill your core values. All right. I'm going to move on. <laughs> the good thing here is do not use this in a dating scenario. I mean, or get to know yourself before you start dating somebody else. I think it's very important to know your values. So, <laughs> it, it, It's so interesting also because once you know your values, you also see the things that trigger you that are against your values. You know, something mm -hmm. happens in your life that, you know, if you're a very fair valued person like mm -hmm. myself I think I value fairness and there's something that's going on and you know in my life that I feel is unfair I just you know I feel the hairs of I'm like that's just not fair you know <laughs> um, and it upsets me it'll you know create emotions in me when I see something that is going against my values and uh, I'm sure and that helps people also recognize what some of their values are too. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, you, you're saying it so beautifully because those values that you live, they really trigger if they're not met or fulfilled or they're challenged or they're not in display in others, they sometimes can really create this emotional reaction that we have to manage. So that's very important for us to know what is inside of ourselves, right? So Sabrina, you, you wrote the paper on this as well, you know, tell us a little bit more around how do we get to know our values, if you can, if that's part of your paper as well? What is the process that people might go through to get to know themselves? Well, I think it's a multi-level, I think it's multi-layered because mm -hmm. one of the things that I find is really important about values is that there is a cultural context to it mm -hmm. about what we hold as important and it can be culturally influenced. So it's the deeper layer of our value system so when we talk about values as being, like Nancy, you talked about fairness as being important, and uh, Zoran, you said that freedom was important to you. Freedom's important for me too, as well as integrity. And these have permutations that have cultural uh, overlays, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that this is quite an interesting, um, uh, you know, uh, slant to value systems because 
that expression then might be a little bit different if we were all going to work together. For example, the three of us here right now are from three different uh, uh, cultural, historical upbringings. Mm -hmm. And although we are all, all three of us coaches and we've done deep work on ourselves, there might be at times uh, where, where there might be sticky, sticky edges yeah, yeah, that we might need to work through because each of these wonderful words or phrases mm -hmm. are, are big. And how do we land them in a way that other people understand that this behavior is who I am mm -hmm. and is an expression of me and that freedom to me might be a little bit different to freedom to you or freedom to you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that that's where it gets a little bit more tricky mm -hmm. and where we need to then gener have generative conversations and dialogues about the meaning making that each one of us are making around, mm -hmm. uh, around it. I wonder what you, what you think about what I just said. Nancy, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I love I love that Sabrina brings in the the cultural aspect, and I know that's um, an area that she's really passionate about. So I love to hear more because I think you you present and you know that interesting angle of the nuances that we don't necessarily always think about, um, mm -hmm. especially you know it's with many things, but also with values. And like you said. You know, so maybe you and Zora and have both have values of freedom, but yeah. that might show up very differently for for the two of you, right? Um, or different things might trigger you. You know, even though you both would say yes, you know, freedom is a value. So that's it's it's interesting, and I think it's it's probably difficult to actually even touch those those nuances. It's um, understanding, you know, that that cultural background. Um, mm -hmm not only from where you grew up, but also your family history and all sorts of things, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, Sabrina. I think that they're multi-layers as well, you know, and cultural context is really, really important because the same people with the same values from different cultures might express it differently. And then you, you said the dialoguing and understanding and sense-making and meaning-making is super important, especially in this interconnected global world that we're living in because in workplace, but also through our lifestyle, we're interacting all the time with different people from different cultures, you know, and this is something it's important for us to be wise enough to understand, you know, that values always have this cultural connotation. I think it's super important. Mm. Yeah. And uh, uh, Nancy, you brought up uh, freedom. I think we started on it because Zoran brought up freedom and it's really my top value, honestly, but freedom might and just to give you an example, freedom might mean a little bit different to you, Zora, and I'd be curious to know what it means for you. Mm -hmm. But for Nancy, uh, it is important for you, but it might not be that important because of the way you grew up. And I think about my own cultural heritage. I grew up in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. where I grew up in a time of insurgence, uh, of time of curfew and rationing, uh, where mm -hmm. it was time of war. And not many people have experienced life in that way at mm. our age, although I guess our parents' generation did. So being in the COVID right now doesn't feel very difficult for me because in my childhood, I experienced some of those things that I'm experiencing now, this level of, um, mm. of having to stay at home. And, and having worked on this piece or come to terms with that what I need around my own sense of inner freedom has made it a little bit more comfortable for me in the way I navigate that around these times. So yeah. I keep thinking it's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, about how we hold these mm -hmm. values, especially at, the, at this time in our life. Mm -hmm. What about you, Soren? Similar to you, I was just reflecting when you were saying, you know, I come from Serbia, Balkans, and that was really turbulent area uh, when I, in my adolescence. Mm -hmm. And it was all before the war, during the war. I, have, I haven't been in the war I left before, but I was in making of it. And I remember all that you're sharing right now that it was also very tense and the freedom kind of started having a different meaning for me because, you know, yes, of course, I'm like you, flexible and agile in COVID. It doesn't really uh, affect me because it's just something that I already lived through and I understand and it doesn't impact me that much. And at the same time, I really value 
people being freed up to be liberated enough to be able to be sovereign. For me, freedom is very close to sovereignty, for you to be able to make your own decisions and choices without anybody else telling you what to do or controlling how you think and how you act. So for me, freedom has a very deep meaning of I'm a sovereign, spiritual human being with the full power to create and co-create my life. And this is taken away. Then, as you said, Nancy, I'm triggered. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, no, 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 no. Somebody is taking away my freedom and my sovereignty. I have to raise up. I have to stand up. And I really have to embody that value and invite other people to do the same. Yeah. So it is interesting, you know, how you come from a certain, you know, upbringings that, you know, will cultivate those values and literally get them to, to embody them. Yeah, what I'm hearing you say, Zoran, is this real sense of having had that life experience of how you want to enable others to mm. be able to free themselves uh, from whatever life circumstances they might be having. And for me, that's really one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about, passionate about development, you know. Uh, and for me, I mean, as, as you both know, I mean, I've studied for Yonks, and that's been about bring myself yeah, in the knowledge area so that I would be able to be available to go all the di different dimensions and places that I can. And mm -hmm. I do want to do that also for people from my country. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, it feels very deep and it feels, uh, it, it makes me emotional yeah. actually to talk about it when I really go down into the depths of my own experiential level. It, create so much like vibration and energy and it feels palpable like i can touch it and hold it like even now as i'm talking about it like i'm feeling it you know as i'm talking about it with you guys yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it is it is lovely and it's also juicy in a certain level because you can touch it and feel it and you know for me it really drives your emotion as well it really drives your your uh, unfoldment, so to say, when you really know how to express your values. So Nancy, just we'll come back into the cultural context of this. I think that I would love to go back to where we started with you. So for the people who are now listening to us and wondering, okay, this sounds amazing. You know, I really kind of, I'm kind of getting what these values all, are all about. And I really want to get to know me and I want to get to know myself on a deeper level, and I want to understand what my values are. What would you share with them would be something that you would like them to do or, or, or practice or, or start? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I think the a first start is really finding, you know, all the words and whether you go Google, you know, values online or, mm -hmm. um, you know, just come up with your own list, but start thinking of what are those areas that really mean something to you. And I think right now in the world, I think people's values are coming forth more than, um, you know, very quiet times. And, and maybe some things that you thought you valued are, are not as important. So I think it's, it's great to really make a list of you know, as mm. one exercise, you can make a list of all of them, but then start narrowing it down. So you, you know, maybe you have a list of 20 things to start mm. with and you say, wow, these are all really important to me. And, you know, I stand by them. But then if you look at, well, what if I want to make it only 10, you know, and you really had to say, okay, what are my 10 most important? And then five, and then really narrow it down even to the top three. So you have a sense, what are at this point in my life, what are really the most important values for me mm -hmm. uh, because I, yeah, I'll just stop there for a second. No, no, no. It's beautiful. And I can throw some words, you know, we can be the focus, kindness, uh, freedom, peace, tolerance, integrity, equality, honesty, integrity, honesty, spirituality, abundance, harmony, leadership, right. adventure, optimism, duty, curiosity, you know, abundance. fun, security. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are so many, right? I mean, mm -hmm. when I'm working with clients on that, sometimes I'll share with them, you know, a list, but I say, please, you know, do not keep it to only this because mm -hmm. it can probably come up with, you mm -hmm. know, hundreds, hundreds mm -hmm. of, of different words that might 
might, you know, be examples. So just, of. just to sum it up, because I think it's super important for people, you know, come look at the list of all, all top values. You can go really broad, then narrow it down to 10 most important, and then challenge yourself to come to the three most important at this stage of your life, right? This is what you said, at this stage of your life. And then begin being aware that those are your values. So now, Sabrina, from your experience, once when you know your values, let's say that you have top three and you know what they are, let's say integrity, uh, stay with freedom, and give me, give me one more that, that you would love to talk about, uh, Sabrina, integrity, freedom. Family. Let's, family. family. Yeah, so, so you know those. So you know those three values, integrity, family, and freedom are yours. Values. What do we do with them? You know, how do we then begin embodying them, living them, expressing them? So I look at values and like what you all talked about as being uh, instrumental values and terminal values. Mm -hmm. So the terminal values are actually very simple, big words like integrity, mm -hmm. freedom, uh, family, mm -hmm. and national security would be another one. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so these, so these are these big terminal values, which I call, which I think are like a violin. Yeah. The bow, uh, the, there's the bow and the violin. And, and then you have what you call the, the instrumental values, because you can't bring the music alive without the bow. <laughs> Yeah. So the terminal value is what I would say is really what is non-negotiable and not and, and, and that you will not compromise. And the instrumental values are the, those other words that you all were discussing, which emanate from that. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things I look at is, well, on the behavior level, what are the experiences that show up that might express integrity? Mm -hmm. What are what are those um, behaviors that express freedom, mm -hmm. that express family? Because these are massive mothership words that sit up there in the sky and we need to ground them. And mm -hmm. people do not see them in us unless they experience it on the behavior level. Yeah. And that's the key for me, as I beautifully said, unless they see them on the behavior level, we are not really expressing them and you're absolutely right they're big words you know they're big chunks it's like oh my god how do i do this so you have to act on it right yeah, yeah. and it's sometimes really subtle though isn't it because sometimes it's not even the behavior it's more a case of the behavior is the doing and the being <laughs> mm, keep on yeah 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 we're really big on that. I know Nancy is. Yeah, the doing are the actions, and the being is that attitude, the characteristic, the state of your heart. Even if you're, if it's like there is the act of generosity where you're actually giving something to someone, and there is the being generous-hearted, which is the character and attitude of generosity. Yeah. So these need to match. Yeah. And that's why you're outstanding women. And that's such a feminine way and, and a really beautiful explanation of embodied femininity in, in a beautiful sense. Because, you know, when I think about myself, you know, from my masculine body, it's like, okay, let's do the values. Let's live them. Let's express them. Let's action them. But you're absolutely right. If you are not being them at the same time, then they're not really in this living space, right? So you really have to be able to be and do yeah, yeah. nancy you know thing you, you, you what I, you would like to share next yeah no i'm just around the same topic it's because i think you know also with values there are some there are values that you truly embody and then people probably have some values that they think they'd like to be embodying mm -hmm. or they um their environment encourages them to embody so they might you know, automatically say, oh, well, that's my value. And there might not always be the behaviors that, you know, that show that, right? So it's truly, you know, looking as Sabrina said, what are the examples? What are the behaviors, um, the doing and the being that actually show up in mm -hmm. your life, you know, to really check, are these really my values, you know, and how do you truly be honest with yourself around it? 
Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit more about beingness, because I think our audience it's, it will get you know doing of the values very simply easily, and and some of them are already in relationship with it, and they're aspiring to to really express them. Let's kind of dive a little bit deeper into that beingness space. What would you like to share next on that? Go for it. Well, even 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 the fact that you we're, we're talking about living your values mm-hmm. is very much around that alignment principle, yeah, of living it on all the different layers and levels of mm-hmm. expression. So when I think of how I express my value system, for me, it's very much around if I'm truly going to express my values, it's not only an action, it is also the state of my mind and my heart behind the action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would then make it truly not only in alignment, but it will make it in it would keep the integrity of the value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think of values as like a guiding principle. Yeah. When we, when we know our guiding principles, it becomes our compass. It becomes the beacon in our mm-hmm. times of conflict, times of sorrow, times of despair. They help us to navigate and find the way forward to shine the light of hope in mm-hmm. the direction that we need to take. Mm-hmm. Oh, I could listen to this for all day long. <laughs> it's like a poetry. It's so cool. <laughs> Anything to add to that, Nancy? <laughs> well, I think it's, you know, it's an important distinction that I think a lot of people don't often think about the the difference between the, the doing and the being. And I think so much in society is focused on the doing. Mm. Uh, so I think for a majority of people, there's not even the focus on on the being um and what does what does that really mean so it's even hard to express sometimes because it is it's it's every it's beyond the actions it's you know your thoughts like you know sabrina says your energy around things um your approach before you even take action right Mm. uh the, your frequency around things, you know, if we can go to the, that different level of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the frequency, what you're imitating. And for me, what I love about it is, is this integral part of it. When you are able to be it with your value, and you're able to express it on a level of such a deep integrity, then you're really living it. Yeah. yeah. You're really able to imitate that value around you, broadcast that frequency, share the energy, and at the same time be an inspired action and display the behavior that people receive as that value. So you're fully embodying it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Mm-hmm. The values are not new, are they? You know, they, they, they go back centuries. Mm-hmm. Centuries and centuries. And as you were speaking, I was just thinking that there are actually four wisdom themes that I subscribe to, which come from an ancient um, Tibetan king who made his country very, very happy. Yeah, and these there are four wisdom themes, and it's like how we think influences how we act, how we relate to each other, and how we find purpose and meaning in the world. That's it, and it all comes from the way we think. Yeah, which is the being. Then how we act is the doing. Mm-hmm. The relating with each other is, you know, the, how we impact and affect each other. And really, what emanates from that is how we find purpose and meaning. Mm. So now, having in mind that we have, you know, five, ten minutes left, I would love to elevate this to the next level and make it a little bit more current to the people. So as you said, Sabrina, and you also mentioned, Nancy, throughout our conversation, we are living in a very interesting times. This, th- those times right now through the COVID-19 and the challenges that we're facing, uh, the transformation of the role that we're seeing, the elevation of consciousness that we're following. It's something really special for all of us. So let's kind of go into that a little bit more. So what does it mean to live values right now? 
And why is that so beneficial for people to really connect to their values, to understand their values, and then in this moment right now, be and to the full embodiment and then express them to the full action. What would you say on that? For me, that's uh, my first reaction is, you know, and then <laughs> Sabrina knows my, my focus on raising the level of consciousness, which is um, as a baseline for that topic, because if we are raising the, the level of consciousness, we are la- raising the frequency mm-hmm. you know, level in the, in the universe and the, on this planet. So in order to do that, we, we need to be really clear on, on who we are, right? On who our values are and really bringing that to a certain clarity. Um, and I think with that clarity and hopefully more focusing on love, compassion, gratitude, um, the, the level of the frequency we'll be raising, you know? Um, so for me, it's, it's, it's to that, you know, and for people where they're not saying, well, love is not, you know, I don't, I don't know if anyone would say love's not important to me, but, <laughs> um, I think whatever it is, whatever mm-hmm. is important to you, having that clarity is automatically going to raise the level of consciousness for that individual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think that clarity of your inner landscape, of your inner beingness, it's, it's absolutely automatically raising because you have a very defined and clear state. And in yeah. that defined, clear state, you can map, you can map your reality in, in a very concise and integral way. So great. What about you, Sabrina? Why do you believe or feel it's super important right now for all of us to be in relationship with our values, to live our values, to express our values? And what is that giving to ourselves and the community and the world and the universe? Let's add the universe in it. Wow. So Zora uh, and Nancy, I actually think that there has never been a time where we have not been so aware of values as now. Mm because of the way ethical responsibility is being is is coming alive on the global stage in the way people behave and act Mm -hmm. around our relationship not only to the COVID-19 but Mm -hmm. also towards governments towards the systems that we live in and to ourselves what I do see and I feel is is happening on a consciousness level is that People are holding their values up high, yet the values are polarized. People Mm -hmm. are coming from polarity. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's a lack of generative dialogue Mm -hmm. to find out or to discover what is important to the other and how we can navigate that. And unfortunately, what's at stake is we can go into uh, the way the dominant elites are um, are managing, yeah, um, are managing us, and we are unable to fight against that. Now, that's going into a different conversation. But what I really see here is, yeah, that's that's another conversation. But what I really see here is the polarity of our values. Yes, it's polarized. Um, and what's happening is that we're standing on either side of a fence and pointing fingers at each other mm-hmm. instead of saying, hey, you know what? Why is that important to you? Exactly. And my question with that or challenge is, are they truly polarized? Are the values truly polarized or are people made to believe that they're polarized? You know, um, But before that happens, Nancy, we even have to go into the conversation. Yeah. Rather than pointing fingers, we have not even to ask the question, but to be curious. Isn't that what coaching is about? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I love what you're saying because I'm seeing it. Yeah, yeah. I love what you're saying, Sabrina, because I'm experiencing and seeing it in myself, with my friends, with my colleagues, with other people, that we are so polarized at this moment in time on the value level that we don't have a space and time to ask that fundamental question. Why is this important to you? I'm listening. Tell me about it because it's usually linked to some kind of value. Yeah. It's usually linked to something that you deeply care about. 
And because when you have, when you know your body, you care about it. You really, that's what makes it so juicy and heartfelt because you love it, you care about it. And then of course you will defend it and you will protect it. But if, unless we have a dialogue, then it just creates this tension of polarization. I'm with you, I, I'm with you. So I think we, we need to empower ourselves and everybody who is listening to be in that space of dialogue, to be in that space of understanding why do other people care about certain things and why that matters to them and then open up in compassion to really understand. Yeah. Mm. And being from that place of curiosity, I think that's mm. spot on, Sabrina, and, and non-judgment, right? Because we all, like you said, we all come from different places, right? Different situations, some different countries, you know, there, there's a lot that creates that. Yeah, we need to take what, into consideration what Sabrina said, cultural context of it, you know, the, our programming, our social conditioning, you know, the, how our minds are brought up, you know, judgment is the big thing. We can have a, a you know, whole podcast around that, how not to judge other people when they display their values, <laughs> if they're not same like yours. But, you know, and how to be inclusive enough to be able to be curious and understand that's their map of the world. This is what they value. It's okay. We have space for everybody. As long as we have a courage to express our values. And I think that I would love to end in that space that sometimes we all need to be courageous enough to stand, you know, in full integrity to express what we really believe. And I think that's an important piece that sometimes people don't do, you know, or are afraid to do, right? And I love that you brought up inclusivity, mm. sorry, because that's the modern day buzzword at the moment. Everyone's talking about diversity and inclusivity, but how much are we actually doing it? Mm -hmm. It's much more than Black Lives Matter. It's mm -hmm. much more than, um, than international relations. It's about the way we have conversations with each other that does not exclude mm -hmm. and, and brings in, I think, that level of understanding and attempting to listen and understand, giving it time. I think we don't give each other enough time these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everything is fast. So if it is everything fast, we gave enough time for this podcast. I'm sure that the audience is going to get a lot out of it. So let's just sum it up, go around the room, around our circles and, and, and see what we would love to leave audience with. One or two things that we would love them to kind of have from us to sail into their life and to be empowered by this conversation. So Nancy, you go first. Hmm. I would say, you know, be... Be focused on yourself, on your self-awareness about, you know, really finding out more about who you are and, and stay curious of others. For me, those are the two biggest points. Wonderful. Thank you, Sabrina. For me, it is sailing to the world with an open heart and open mind. Yeah, and I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm in between two of you. Get to know you and get to know you, what really makes you you. I think the beautiful thing about exploring the values nowadays is that you understand yourself, you understand how you react, you understand how you respond, and then you understand how you relate to others. I think that if you don't know it, do it. And if you're aware of them, revisit them once again, because maybe you evolved, maybe you changed, maybe you're in a different cycle of life and your values actually became something else. Maybe something new popped in, but do it and then be courageous enough to express it, to love it, to share it, to live it. Thank you so much for chatting with me today, for coming to this podcast. It was lovely to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll continue. We already have two more topics to talk about, so let's make sure that we continue talking. Once again, thank you so much for listening, dear audience. I will hope to see you in another podcast. Sabrina, Nancy, thank you. Thank you, Zoran. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you.